right, guys, we're just going to jump right into it because I feel it is, it's so much, like, I, ha I have notes. I, I, I have notes. So, we're, we're just going to get right into it. We're going to talk about WWE's Payback pay-per-view last night. Now, I haven't been to Payback, I think, the last live pay Payback that I attended was maybe two years ago when it was in Jersey. It might have been three years ago. I'm not keeping track of this count. This is also probably the first pay-per-view I've watched for WWE in months. I I completely like lost so much interest in whatever it was they were doing. So, kickoff. I believe it was two matches. I didn't realize the pay-per-view started like a whole hour early now. So I was confused as to why it ended at 9.30. But apparently it started at 7 o'clock. First match was the Riot Squad versus the Iconics. Now, if anybody knows me, I stand for the Iconics. I love the fact that they are like legit best friends in real life. Like they went to school together. They're legit best friends. Again, as I said previously in a video, tag matches, granted I was in a tag team. Those were not like something that I absolutely downright love because one, as a tag team, you cannot force people to get along. You may luck up in the chemistry works, but for the most part, a tag team has to be something that like it, like it's genuine, genuine, genuine chemistry. The Iconics have that. The Riot Squad was put together. So the Riot Squad was um, Liv Morgan and Ruby Riot, aka Heidi Lovelace. For those of you who are indie scene fans. All right. Riot Squad won. I personally didn't like the finisher they use. Like, I feel the knee gimmick that Liv was doing didn't hit all the way. And then Ruby's Pele kick was like, it didn't hit all the way. Like, it was a, it was a really awkward finish for the match. But... The Riot Squad won, all right, so be it. Which, to me, made no sense when the Riot Squad was literally ready to kill each other about two, three months ago. I'm I'm just saying. All right, second match was Apollo Crews versus Bobby Lashley. Now, I'm not sure what the whole Lashley MVP Shelton Benjamin thing is supposed to... I don't understand it. Um... I don't know if I should say what I wanted to say. Yeah, I mean, those of you that know the vibes, know the vibes with how that match looked for the culture. That that I think that's a safe way to say it. I I, I didn't I don't I don't know what's supposed to be happening with that angle. I I I was confused. I thought MVP was US champ, and then. Apollo apparently won the title back or the title never changed. I I I have no clue. The finish was cool, like the 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 tap out submission. I, I I'm always here for a good submission finish. So it it wasn't like Bobby really went over dirty. So I guess that's an angle we just have to, you know, kind of see where it will go from there. Next match. I believe now this was the main show, was Big E versus Sheamus. Now, I personally, I love Big E. He's dope as hell in person. He's a sweetheart. I do not like the fact that he is still with New Day, shaking a tail feather and twerking every chance he gets. The New Day train has come and gone. I hated it. I jumped on it. I love the bandwagon. I was here for it. And I'm over it again. Like, I really feel those three men all need singles runs. And they need to be champions in their own individual way. We already know Kofi got screwed. However you want to chop, screw it, flip it. Kofi was screwed. It is now time for Big E to go on a title run again. Like, he was a threat in NXT. He was a threat when he was Dolph Ziggler's bodyguard. They have made Big E into a joke. And I, I for one, I would love to see a legit title reign. He he beat Sheamus, who I'm confused because I thought Sheamus was feuding with Jeff Hardy. This is how y'all know I have not watched any type of WWE in the last few months because 
I really thought Sheamus was having a whole feud with Jeff Hardy, who we were using his alcoholism and his drug addiction in a storyline. And WWE is so shallow. Like, I, you can't pay me enough to use my addiction as a storyline. Like, come on, bro. Like, do better. The finish was um a powerbomb finish. Um, Phenomenal match. Uh, the selling in the match was amazing, which case in point why Big E just needs to be a singles competitor. Like, it was amazing. Um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't hate the match. It was, it, like I said, it was a pretty good match overall. Um, next match was Baron Corbin or King Corbin. Uh, that's still a thing apparently versus Matt Riddle. Matt Riddle won. His finisher is really weird. Like it's, it's a really weird corkscrew type of swanton. I, I have no clue. I personally do not care for Matt Riddle's gimmick at all. Like, it was cute the first few months. I don't care for it now. Like, honestly. Um, And then, I don't like the whole King Corbin gimmick. I really was feeling him as the lone wolf. Like, when he had the hair, it was like they shaved his hair off and he went com completely, like, in the opposite direction. Um, They, they are apparently feuding... Match ended, Riddle went backstage to get interviewed, and then Corbin attacked him. So I'm pretty sure they're going to kind of drag this feud out for the next few weeks. Next match, which I feel should have been either co-main event or main event, was Bailey and Sasha versus Shayna Baszler and Nia Jax. Now, I know we were all clutching our pearls every time Nia got hold of my like. I, I was genuinely concerned for, for Sasha just getting tossed like a rag doll. Um, the match was for not like, I don't think people realize when you wrestle Sasha Banks, Sasha is going to make you work. I was very impressed with Shayna Baszler. Um, didn't buy into her hype too much in NXT. Like, I felt like they just brought her up so they could do the four horsewomen of MMA versus the four horsewomen of WWE. That was a few we deserved, but everybody decided to go get pregnant and injured and all of this other nonsense. So, yeah, didn't happen. But let's talk about how Shayna Baszler is low-key fuego. I don't, like, I didn't believe it at first, but sis is low-key dope. She hooked Bailey. I'm lying. She hooked Sasha. And it was like a weird leg bar she had her in. She grabbed Bailey for the Kurfuda clutch thing that she does. And it was so trippy because she still had Sasha hooked in the leg lock. And then somehow she got them both down. She got Sasha arm around Bailey neck, choking Bailey. And they both, like, it, it was creative. It was different because I don't feel that's a finish that we've ever seen, let alone we've seen in a women's match. But it was low-key fire. I was I was here for it. Like, but now we know what's going to happen. And I, and I said it to somebody. I, t I was like, watch. They're going to take them belts off of Sasha and Bayley. And Sasha, at some point in the next few weeks, is going to turn on Bailey, and then they're going to put the SmackDown belt on Sasha. And I'm here for it. Y'all know me. I'm a Sasha Banks mark. So Sasha can do no wrong in my eyes. I'm here for it. I'm here for a, a Sasha Banks SmackDown Women's Champion title moment. Next match, which the ending confused me, was Keith Lee versus Randy Orton. Now, Anybody that know, Randy Orton, he another one. Randy gonna make you work, bro. He don't do all the flashy nonsense. Randall Keith Orton is going to make you work, bro. You couldn't tell me Randy wasn't gonna go over. You could, you cannot tell me Randy wasn't gonna win that match. I think most of the internet was confused that not only did Keith win, he won clean, bro. It wasn't even like it was a finish that you could, you know, argue about. It was a clean 
ass finish. I was confused. Like, I was confused because I really thought they was going to job Keith out. I don't understand what was the point in him winning the NXT Championship and the North American Championship. They had him as a double champ. And then had him, he drops the North American title because he said he doesn't want to hold two belts. He wants to give other people opportunity, which we are all for. We are all for equal opportunity. And then he drops the NXT title and they call him up to the main roster. I'm like, that happened really fast. Like, it was really quick how all of this happened in like the last maybe two, three months. Confusion is me. Confusion is me me because i did not understand that finish whatsoever um to me that finish basically means there's no need for them to feud it took away any to me this is just me this is if i was booking it it took away any reason for me to want to watch them feud now it's like okay keith beat you clean like we know he can beat you now like he's not the underdog in the situation he beat you which Another thing that confuses me is Randy was beating up all these legends just like in the last month. He was trying to kill Edge. He was trying to kill Christian. He kicked Ric Flair in the skull. He RKO'd and kicked Shawn Michaels in the skull who no-sold it. Like, I know y'all saw that video and we were just all desperately like trying to figure out how did Shawn Michaels kick out of not one, but two signature finishes he kicked out of? I... Y'all gonna stop playing with me. Yup. Shawn... Okay. All right. Yeah. So like I said, that, that took away from me wanting to see any more of that feud. Um, We can just go back to having Randy. What? Oh, you know what it was also? Randy also kicked Drew McIntyre in the head and potentially, you know, might have fractured his skull type of thing. So it sounds like Drew is about to drop the heavyweight title, which I would be disappointed in because I like Drew McIntyre. He was so, he was so nice to me when I met him. Like, oh my God, he is such a sweetheart and he is so nice to look at. <laughs> but yeah, so... Not really interested in Randy Orton and Keith Lee feud anymore at this point. Next match, this is the second to last match, was the Mysterios, Ray and his son versus Rollins and Murphy. Ray Mysterio is wrestling with one eye, folks. I, that's, uh, I don't, I didn't, I, I don't understand it. He's wrestling with one eye and his son is trying to avenge him and everything. The match was low-key fire though. Like, I ain't even gonna hold y'all. Like, I wasn't too mad at the match. Like, I I was watching it, but I wasn't watching it, watching it. But it was low-key fire. Um, Y'all give Dominic Mysterio a couple of more years. Give, give that young man another year or two at the PC. He's gonna be fire. Like, the fact that he... He's able to do a lot of the stuff that he's doing. And then just based off who his father is, he's going to be a, a, a low-key problem once he, you know, he train a little bit more and he clean up. Dominic Mysterio is going to be an issue. Goat Rollins can never do any wrong in my eyes. He did what he he was supposed to do. He got, he got them guys over. I... I I really like besides him injuring Finn Balor years ago, I've never really watched a Seth Rollins match that I did not like. So you know, y'all y'all better give Seth Rollins his flowers while he's still alive too at this point. Um the match ended with Dominic had gave Murphy a 619. And Ray got Rollins out the way and then Dominic hit a frog splash and got the victory. Last match. Th this is what, what I've been waiting to get into. Bray Wyatt the Fiend versus Braun Strowman versus freaking Roman goddamn Reigns. All 
All right. Let me talk about the match first, and then I'm going to get into my rant about Roman Reigns. Match ended with Ra Reigns came out with the contract he was supposed to sign earlier in the week. He comes out, he signs the contract, boom. He starts wailing on everybody with a steel chair. Boom, fast forward a couple of minutes later. He low blows um, Bray Wyatt. He spears Braun. He pins Braun. One, two, three. He is the new Universal Champion. We kind of figured that Bray was going to lose because he came out with a reg with the regular title. He didn't come out with the Fiend title. So we kind of knew what the vibes were already. Bet. Let's talk about Joseph Anawai, a.k.a. Roman freaking Reigns. Now, for those of you who don't know the backstory with Roman, Roman apparently has leukemia, which I believe is cancer of your blood or something to that magnitude. I'm not going to be one of these fans that say he's lying and using it as an angle because I don't play when it comes to any type of cancer. So I would really hope it's not an angle at this point, people. So let's not be that shallow and please don't be those type of marks. Let me make that disclaimer first. He decided to drop his title due to leukemia coming back and then he didn't want to, you know, wrestle with the whole corona thing going on, which I respect. If you're gonna run with the whole corona thing, people, you gotta run with it all the way. Please do not half-ass it and make corona convenient for you when you can. All right, bet. Roman drops the title. Now, I don't have the information in front of me, so I can't tell you when exactly. I don't know if it was February he dropped it or March, right when Corona shut the world down. All right, fine, whatever. Fast forward six, seven months later, Roman Reigns makes a freaking reappearance and is a Paul Heyman guy now. Now, I said this to somebody last night. I don't care what nobody say. This is not Roman Reigns' first heel turn. They've tried it, and you know what happened? It flopped. Because Roman can't cut a decent promo. Roman's not a talker. When he was with the Shield, he was not the talker. Rollins was the talker for the Shield. Let's, like, come on, people. Stop making this way more harder than what it is. And I guess it's because I lived the life at one point. I know better. A lot of y'all... That claim y'all are fans, y'all are not fans. Y'all are marks. That's what y'all are. Y'all are marks and y'all want everything to be your way, but you're not looking at it what the reality is. All right, bet. Roman comes back when there are countless guys on this roster, i.e. Big E, who deserve title runs. What I don't get about the WWE is that they're pushing the same people and this is what turned me off this is going to be a very long video folks i'm one of y'all now so if you want to stop watching the rant now or make me you know what maybe i'll make this a second video i don't know but yeah roman reigns has been out of action for six months and he comes back and he gets a title put right back on him where was this energy when finn balor got injured at a pay-per-view and had to drop his title the next night. Keep in mind, Finn Balor finished his match with a dislocated shoulder. And he popped it back into place. Thank you very much. I said what I said. So, Roman comes back and he gets a heel turn. But what pissed me off was he did that. No new music. No new gear. He's still using the same music and wrestling in a bulletproof vest that he had when he was with S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, I had another friend. Get on my post about some, oh, who he said? Jeff Hardy hasn't changed his gimmick. Jeff Hardy, Hardy has changed his gimmick several times. Even when he first started with the E, they had the whole Hardy mixed with the brood type of gimmick. Everybody who has been somebody, it is a very, very rare instance that you're going to see somebody who hasn't changed their gimmick. Granted, Sasha may have not changed her gimmick per se, but she got new music. She's altered her boss image. Bailey did a whole gimmick change. Edge went from the sexy vampire guy to the sexy rated R superstar. Randy Orton was the prodigal child who went to 
the legend killer to the viper back to the legend killer like come on please spare me with this nonsense that is known as roman reigns and y'all if anybody who knows me in real life y'all know i was a roman reigns fan when he first came out i loved me some roman you could like i love me some samoan men in general but i loved me some roman you couldn't tell me nothing about roman reigns but several years later he's still wrestling in the bulletproof vest folks what are y'all doing and y'all like that nonsense last night that they put a title back on him nah y'all gotta stop playing with me man y'all y'all really y'all y'all marks gotta be stopped because it it legit made no other than the fact that he never lost his title he had to relinquish his title that's y'all only argument to that other than that, do we really need another Roman Reigns title run right now? He's slowly becoming another John Cena. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So if you if you feel different, please check me in the comments below. Let's cause I, I got time today. I got all the time tonight to talk about the nonsense that is known as the WWE with Roman Reigns. And his heel turn is only going to work right now because he's with Paul Heyman. If Paul Heyman decides he doesn't want to be with the WWE no more or they decide to release him and wish him the best of luck in his future endeavors, um, that Roman heel turn ain't going to mean diddly squat. So, yeah. Yeah. I got time today if y'all really want to take it there. I got nothing but time. Please, Hit, you can hit me up here. You can hit me on Instagram, Talia Jeanette 01. You can hit me on Snapchat, Ace of Havoc 01. You can hit me on Facebook, Talia Jeanette. I got nothing but time to talk about the nonsense that is Roman Reigns. And this, th that, like, other than that, the pay per view was solid. Few hiccups, but it was a solid pay per view. The match was fine until Roman got involved. Yeah, y'all gonna start. You know what? I'm done. I don't. I don't want to talk about it no more.